Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of His Turn, Her Turn. I would be the His Turn portion, I'm Paul I'm Bryan, the her turn. <laughs> and she would be the Her Turn, Lauren Fix, the car coach. Yeah. We try assiduously to find interesting places to shoot cars. We got one this time, let so, me tell you. <laughs> so we were, we were driving from uh, Syracuse, New York to Boston, and, and we said, Let's go down by Faneuil Hall. Let's see, there's got to be a thousand places in Boston. But I for found us to my show favorite off. place to take you. I know, right across the street is this place called the Union Oyster House, where yep. I think we're going to be oinking out here in, in about 15 minutes. You'll see some pictures. Dozens of oysters, we're plowing them down. <laughs> but you don't care where we're going to have dinner. No, they want to know what's and, next to and, you. And you know what? They don't care that that's Faneuil Hall up there, that's which really is cool. the the home of the Cocker Faneuil. And, uh, and Faneuil Hall is a very famous place for tourists. There's a lot of great things to see and do here in Boston. You told me it was about the dog. <laughs> We're actually here to take a look at the new 2016 Chevrolet Camaro, yeah. which... Uh, On a new platform. Yeah, it is. But, you know, it may be a new platform, but there are old ways of looking at it. There is a campaign that showed up in the 1970s where everybody sang along. They went... Uh, like this. America, what's your favorite sport? Baseball. Sandwich. Hot dog. Pie. Apple. And what's your favorite car, America? Chevrolet. Let me see, that's baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and Chevrolet, huh? Right. Well, you sure sound like America to me. We are. Well, then you better tell me again, because I just might forget. We love baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and Chevrolet. And you know what? It's still around, because we stopped by a Chevrolet dealer on the way here as yeah. well, just outside of Boston. And, and we found some really, really excited. Enthused yeah. sales guys. Really. Listen to what they had to say. Yeah, they said. Baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, Chevrolet. So they were really excited about what they were seeing with the new 2016 Camaro. Everybody but, is. We had people you know coming us up a, on the roadway. It's, it's the big head fake, though, because as much as this looks like a new car to us, right. it has a lot of old styling cues to it. And I right. can't say old, but you know, classic Camaro styling. Iconic. Iconic. How okay, about that word? You can say that. Camaro's iconic. I had a Camaro in 1976. They came out in 1967. They wanted to go head to head in the Pony Car Wars with Mustang, and mm. they're still competing with them. So they had to do something even more advanced from the previous generation, and I think they've accomplished that. Yeah, and there's a war going on right now, too. We got Challenger in that war, too. Yeah, we got so Challenger. So there's a lot of other here. performance models from other brands on top of that. And Mustang, too. Mustang so, also, not Mustang. Mustang also, yeah. Mustang too is a horrible disaster. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, the, the, the war is on between Mustang, Camaro, and Challenge. Right. It's always been about horsepower and handling and yeah. brakes and style. And GM came up with independent rear suspension before Ford did. Now they've got it. But what they did with this car is they made the wheels a half an inch wider, mm -hmm. same diameter, 20 inch, and lighter. Plus, the car is lighter overall, an average of 200 pounds or more, depending on the engine. And they added a new engine as well. Yeah, they did. Uh, there's a 2-liter turbo that's base. Then they make a 3.6-liter right. in the middle. And then the 6.2-liter V8. Which this is an SS. Yeah, it's the, the SS 455 horsepower, 455 torque. Pulling stumps out with this. And, and if this is here then you know that there's going to be another one on the way here in, in a year oh, or so. Oh, of course there is. I mean, how did we get this car versus maybe the six-cylinder or the two-liter turbo or an automatic? We luck, got luck of the draw. Lucky. He's the, he got the jackpot. We got the 6.2-liter Camaro SS with a manual transmission. And you know what? We drove all the way from Syracuse to Boston. We're getting about 19 miles to the gallon. Yeah, we did well. We, we did actually, better than I thought we were going to I thought it. we were going to have to stop two, three times for gas because my old Camaro was, if there was a gas station, it was calling. Yeah, the <laughs> old one was a total Friends of OPEC special. Yeah. yeah. But they've done a lot with this car to make it lighter, to make it faster, to make it brake better, make it handle better. And I think that's a big part of it. You know, it, and as you take a look at the front of the car as well, let's talk about some of the styling cues that mm -hmm. are going on here. They've gone to LED headlights. Uh, there's a, there's a, a lot of, of new tech that's being used. And the illuminated bow tie. Yeah, illuminated bow tie, which is, which is cool. kind of fun tech and stuff. Yeah. It, the, the grating that goes in the front of this car, you look at that and you say, well, geez, you know, what's grill, going on right? there? It's a grill. No. This is kind of a cool thing. The air actually moves faster to the radiators with that grill in place 
than it does as if there were nothing there at all. That makes a lot of sense. That's really wise use of aerodynamics. Yeah. And when, they said there was more wind tunnel testing done on this Camaro than there has ever been done on a Camaro in the past. Yeah, 350 hours they had That's this expensive. in the wind tunnel. Yeah. It's a good thing they have their own wind tunnel. It's good, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying. So anyway, uh, oh, they got that. They've also used LEDs in the back. I think it's time to take, take it out and yeah. uh, we'll tell people what we found on the road. Absolutely, come join us. So we're on the 90, which is the New York State Thruway, heading toward Boston, and for you people that live there, Boston. Um, and we're driving the 2016 Camaro. Um, like Paul and I have been saying, there's lots of changes going on in this vehicle. Uh, I've got some pluses and minuses right out of the box. I mean, performance-wise, 455 horsepower, 455, 455 pound-feet of torque. This is a beast. So if you're looking at performance, this car absolutely has it. Are you looking for torque? It has it. Are you looking for handling? Absolutely. Brakes? Yes. Good looking car. However, I have some negatives. And my number one negative, and anyone who knows me knows I'm going to say this, there is a zero, zero as in none, lumbar support on both the driver and passenger side. So if you got a problem and you need lumbar, you're going to have to buy an aftermarket something to put in here or an aftermarket seat. So that is a disappointment of mine. Uh, additionally, I've always had an issue with the height of the belt line, which is right along here. Yeah, it makes it look totally cool. It looks like a little matchbox car. But for me, it blocks my vision. It's part of blocking the vision. And I think, let's see what Paul thinks, what I think, we've got Alaska-sized blind spots. Uh, so besides the Alaska-sized blind spots, yes, like the state of, um, there is zero back seat. I think for insurance reasons, like in a Porsche, yeah, there's a back seat. It's good for putting your stuff, your clubs, but you can't even put a child safety seat back there. Uh, in addition, uh, other things that, that are not really my favorite, when you're looking at the dash, I understand that people like the cockpit design, but these two bumps that are here in front are a visual distraction to me, and I would rather have something smoother. If you're going after something along the lines of a Mustang or a Challenger, and I know they're direct competitors, you're gonna have to think about the visibility in all of this, and part of that issue to me is the fact that it's limiting. So those are my five or so issues. Number one, lumbar. Two, belt line. Three, not a fan of the dash. Four, back seat, uh-uh. Five, Alaska-sized blind spots. So other than that, from the outside, this car looks awesome. The design is fabulous. Great performance aspects. Eh, not so thrilled on some of the styling. But driving this thing mostly on the highway, although we're gonna do some back roads coming up and you'll see some of that footage. This car is a nice, tight handling package. They did a great job. I owned a Camaro back in 19, I had a 76 Camaro, well in 1976. That car was a sloppy mess. This car is specific, it's tight, performance oriented, well designed, except for those five items. Please add lumbar, I'm begging you. Let's see what Paul thinks. Makes nice noise, huh? Well, all right, Lauren, uh, it took you a little bit through her first impressions of this new 2016 Camaro. Uh, let me see if I can uh, add my thoughts to it. I know what she was saying first. Uh, let's talk about some of the things that she got into. Lauren is uh, she's 5'8", I'm 6'3". I know that she was not crazy about the belt line here, nor with the uh, instrument binnacle here. While I, I get the binnacle thing here is a bit of a distraction, I suspect it's more so from her altitude uh, than it is from mine. I was hoping, actually, with, with this new generation of Camaro, that this belt line would have gone down a little bit more. This, this in here is what we're talking about, because in, in the older car, in the uh, Camaro that was based on the Holden chassis, it, uh, I, I always kind of felt like it was in a bathtub driving. And I was hoping that now that we've switched platforms, that it would change. It has some, but really not as much as I would have liked to, to see. 
we, we need to, to step back for just a second while we're talking about this to explain why this generation of Camaro happened. The car that we've had for, what, six, seven years, the fifth generation uh, Camaro, was built on an Australian platform made for General Motors by a, a division of theirs called Holden, H-O-L-D-E-N, in Australia. Well, they're shutting down that plant. So when they shut down that plant, they lost the platform for building this Camaro. So they said, okay, what are, what are we going to do? They're, it poses a couple of interesting problems for them. First off, they got to build a Camaro. They got to do that. I mean, they have to play in this market. If they're going to go up against uh, other performance cars, Mustang, Challenger, they got to have, you know, this is like the old Trans Am race days, folks. I mean, you know, you had a Mustang, you had uh, a Challenger, you had a Camaro. Back then, you had a, an AMC Javelin running, uh, which, you know, Roger Penske raced along with Mark, Mark Donahue. I mean, there are some really, really cool cars that were going on. So, so anyway, they've got to have a Camaro. So what to do? They came out with the Cadillac ATS, and that's what this car is based on. This, this new Camaro is based on the ATS platform, uh, in which I, I still don't think you can get a V8 engine. I think they saved the V8 engine for the Camaro only. They've got turbo sixes in the, uh, in the Cadillac, that are, it's the 3.6 liter turbo that they put into this car as well. Uh, but, but it had to be a V8 engine. If they were gonna hang on to their Camaro customer, it had to be with a V8 engine. Well, boy howdy, as she mentioned, 455 horse, 455 uh, pounds foot of torque. But, but it also made General Motors walk a really interesting walk here because they, they wanted to have a different car, but they didn't want to make it so different that people would say, oh, that's not a Camaro. That's not what it is. So one of the things that we've been doing when we're, when we're driving the car, we pull off to a rest stop or a gas station or wherever it might be, we kind of buttonhole people and say, do you see anything different about that car? And they kind of look and they go, well, it's a Camaro. So, so General Motors was successful in imitating the car, not alienating the old Camaro customer, and yet updating it. The, the front end of the car with the new headlights, the LEDs, the, the LED taillights as well, they are cracking. They look great. They, I, I just love it a lot. Uh, so anyway, the performance is what you would expect it to be. It's stiffer than the old car. Uh, from, from the inside, the IP is, is very useful. The, the center stack, though, where the Apple CarPlay and all of the climate controls and everything else, all the command stuff that's in the middle of the car, it's got a weird angle to it. You're getting, we're getting some weird reflections off of it. So I don't know if that's just that it's a cloudy day or I'm not sure. I'm sure it was put on that angle for sunshine. Uh, considerations to put a little bit of down tilt on it. But I'm not sure if I'm crazy about it. Uh, seats, they, I, I think they could have gone for a better seat than what they have. You know, clearly, and, and, and Lauren and I joke about it all the time with the lumbar support. She's dead on on this. To not have it on the driver's side and not have it available on the, on the uh, passenger side is an error of omission. It's an unforced error. They should have this for a $44,000 car in the SS. It ought to be there. Um, other than that, big beefy steering wheel, good controls. I'm happy with it. I uh, want to get into the twisties. There are lots and lots of police out today, so it's a little hard to lean into it, but we'll see what we can do. So now that you got Paul's opinion on the driving aspects, I really love the Apple CarPlay. It is one of my favorite aspects of all the vehicles that are offering it, and believe me, every manufacturer is starting to get on board with Android and Apple CarPlay. Um, a big, big fan of OnStar, always have been. Uh, I will note that when we did call OnStar, just as a test, that she cannot hear someone in the passenger seat so well. It's about a 60% difference. Uh, I also made a phone call 
in the driver's seat, no problem. Sounds like you're on a cell phone. In the passenger seat, it's about 60% less. So keep that in mind if you're planning on having a conference call. This is probably not the place to do it. Um, but as far as interface, navigation system, very intuitive. This is the Chevy Link, so this has been around for a while. Um, everything works as stated. Nice size screen. So from a standpoint of technology, which is what people love. They love to use their car as... I'm driving to work, got to make some phone calls, or you need to make some appointments. The navigation system, the total Chevy Link system works great as expected. And again, can't go wrong with OnStar. And it's really cool because it's smooth on the mirror, not a button. So uh, if you're thinking about uh, technology-wise, we definitely got an A+. As for the interior treatments and, and other things that are going on, the controls are really big. Uh, to say the controls for the, for the climate control are big, they're big. I mean, they're big honking dials. You'll see them uh, here in, in the video, I'm sure. But uh, you know what? I, I think that, again, for the amount of money that we're spending here on a $44,000 car in the SS, that they could have done better with material selection than they did. I think that people are getting more and more used to having more tactile experience inside the car than what this car is giving me right now. Uh, is it a purpose car? Yeah, its purpose is performance and, and cracking it around corners and going fast in a straight line. But that's not to say that the other things are excluded when you do that. Uh, if I'm going to spend this for this car, you want to have a little you want to have a little more so we've arrived in boston although we started off here in boston we wanted to show you some of the aerodynamics of this car they really did a neat job with the hood functional hood scoops even the roof you can see there's like a, a divot at like almost in the top it's all aerodynamically designed it's kind of like a, an old fiat abarth double bubble <laughs> Well, no, I'm serious. I mean, that was no. I mean, no, but GM that doesn't was, want to hear that. No, they do. I mean, that's a very classic styling right. thing. The double bubble A bar is a famous, famous car that Bertone did for them. Oh wow, well, that's a so, valuable car today. Well, yeah. I mean, you could buy a couple Camaros for a double bubble right really? now. But but anyway, that really works extremely well. Right. Uh, Exterior wise, it looks amazing. I give them absolutely top props for a great looking car from the outside. The yep. inside. You heard my five disenchanted ver issues with the car. And? Well, as I pointed out, it's a little bit different for me because I'm a little bit taller. Now, I, I want you to understand. I'm standing on the curb. She's standing on the curb, and I'm standing in a well. What do you this mean? Is like, I'm actually This is like the reverse Paul Newman, where, yeah. you know, or Alan Ladd, where they used yeah. to make the leading lady walk in a trough next to them. So right. That they, you know, they would take over the height. We just wanted to be equal size for yeah. you. So it's a his turn and a her turn I'm say, on the same level. The different modes, there's a touring yeah. mode a sport mode, a race mode, at least, and only in the 6.2 liter, and a snow and ice mode. So if you're forced to drive this through the winter, I would get a truck, <laughs> then you this would be an option for you to consider. But I have to say, they did a great job. The wheel options, the red trim, the red stripe down the side. This is a very sporty looking car with that has all the technology you could possibly want. And, and for those of you who like mixing your own gears, you can still get a manual transmission with the big engine if you right. want it. Even, and it's got even rev though, matching. Even though the automatic is faster. Right. And, and I understand that. I, I like mean, you know that. Well, that, that's the whole thing. Intellectually, I understand that that eight speed automatic is faster than I can shift. Right. But emotionally, I want the connection of, of shifting well, we my own We both drive manual transmission vehicles every yeah. day. So that's probably why we're used to that. We yeah. want to put the power where we want it when we want it rather sure. than a computer telling us but but the rev match feature is pretty cool yeah it is nice it makes it uh, sound like the exhaust is magnetic awesome. uh, magnetic uh, suspension that, yeah that's uh, first time borrowed. in the camaro too yeah borrowed from the corvette right it was first used there 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 are a lot of things here if you take a look at the back of the car you're going to see some corvette styling cues there as yeah. well with the way the tail lights are going so there's some design language GM that's family go, going through here uh all in all uh they're going to sell these like crazy. Who yeah. are you kidding? They're Camaro enthusiasts. They're waiting for this. 
So all in all, I think there's going to be a lot of Camaro people waiting for this car. Yeah. People collect every generation. They're people that are very serious collectors, the enthusiasts. It's okay. gonna, it's going to be fun to watch the war that goes on here because you've got you know Chevrolet saying we own this you know, this performance segment. I don't know. I Ford don't says don't they know. can't build Mustangs fast enough. Yeah, they have 200 percent growth. But, but will this car affect Ford's? Mustang sales. That's tough. I think people that own Mustangs, and I happen to own a Mustang, even though I have owned Camaros in the past. Yeah. I think people that are enthusiasts with Fords will stay there. They're not going to suddenly shift and go buy a Camaro. And those people that love GM Camaros, I have GM friends, they wouldn't even consider a Ford. They'd slit their wrists first. Yeah. And there are people that are Mopar people like that too. We've driven the Hellcat, and you should check out our Hellcat review. Sure. People that love the Hellcat. And I learned how to drive on a Mopar, so I, on a Barracuda back when. <laughs> yeah. So so anyway, if you're a, a Chevy person, You'll this car happy. is going to make you very, very happy. I think Agreed. that you're going to do great. You, know, you can stop by here in a relatively short while and see we'll the new showroom. They'll, yeah. be, they'll be in dealer showrooms. So you can stop by and do that. Uh, Drive all the different engine choices. I think you'll see some very impressive engines. You might be options. really surprised. Right. You might be Something really you could surprised. drive every day and not have to worry about, oh boy, how am I going to support a 6.2 liter engine? Maybe that 2 liter turbo is going to be right up your alley. Well, you know, with gas prices where they are right now, it becomes more attractive. It certainly does. So, I don't know, I think I would do it. Absolutely. So anyway, let's wrap it up. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be uh, headed back for Chicago, and you can find me on Saturday mornings on WLS AM Radio. Uh, you can find it on iHeartRadio. We stream right on WLS AM. It's a great com. show. Got to watch. Got to listen. You uh, can find me on Facebook. I tweet at the Paul Bryan. You can read it right down here. And uh, Lauren Fix. Uh, I am her Lauren. Toe because it takes a half hour. <laughs> I'm Lauren Fix, the car coach. You can follow all my social media through at Lauren Fix or laurenfix.com. I'm posting breaking news on Twitter, what's going on with all of the car information that's constantly flowing. Uh, it's great we, stuff. Yeah, we love your comments. So thanks for all the comments. Thanks for the views. Thanks for sharing it on your social media. We truly appreciate you watching and check out our other videos. And and subscribe too. And, and subscribe. I mean, subscribe. we've, we've yeah. got over, what, 6,500 oh uh, subscribers on Something these like that. things? millions of views and we appreciate your comments we appreciate your subscription and check out our facebook page his turn her turn with the paul bryan because he's the only one and <laughs> i am lauren except Fix. no substitutes right. thanks so much folks thanks for we'll watching. see you next time we're going to go eat some oysters oh yeah let's go I think that would be a